A plus perfect Chris Farley mock drafts. Yeah, things are going great. We had to name the perfect mock drafts after the perfect comedian. Of course, we're big guys, so Jeremy and I are big fans. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. We come to you from the Ingles studio. Ingles supermarkets, low prices, love the savings. The Philadelphia Eagles, perfect mock draft. You started the process with three first-round draft picks, did a little uh, maneuvering with the New Orleans Saints, still have two of them. Uh, and have two next year, which mm-hmm. is very wise because that tells me that this is basically going to be the make or break year for Jalen Hurts. So how can you make him the most comfortable? That's what I look. That, and to me, that's playing good defense, being able to run the ball, take the onus off him, having to be a deep ball thrower. You saw in the in the playoff game against Tampa Bay when teams know what's coming. This offense is pitiful. With that being said, I know somebody's going to look at me and say, "But we'll be." Sweet mother of God, what is the hold up? At taking a receiver, I do not understand why people think that's how this is going to go. I can't figure it out for the life of me. You've invested in, in obviously, in Devontae Smith. Jalen Rager, who you took ahead of Justin Jefferson. People just seem to throw him out with the bathwater. Mm-hmm. Quez Watkins, you brought in Zach Paschal. You've still got uh, Dallas Godierte, Miles Sanders. You realize that four receivers on this team is redundancy, right? Because you're not going to be that kind of offense. So, yes, there is a receiver in this. No, it's probably not as high as you think it will be. Well, let's get into it with their first uh, or their first pick of the first round. It comes at number 15 overall. This was Miami's pick. Um, Philadelphia at 15. Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback out of LSU. Well, I mean, one of the things that you can look at to kind of see what teams think their needs are. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what we think they need and what they what they think they need can be completely different. If you look at who they met with at the combine, who they brought in for top 30s, it is obvious that they are prioritizing a corner. Now, to my knowledge, Derek Stingley has not been in the building because I don't think they believe he will be there. They would not make a move up. If they're going to make a move up, it would be for Sauce Gardner, who they did bring in on a top 30 visit. There's a lot of rumor that they have a real interest in Jordan Davis, which I'm not averse to. For my perfect mock draft, I can't do that. That That's just not – I don't see that as a, as a necessity right here. There are other players that you can add between this draft and the next draft with Fletcher Cox coming back. But just know that rumor is out there. For me, if I'm Philadelphia, there are about five guys – uh, Devin Lloyd, Derek Stingley, uh, Nicobe Dean ish, Edge guys. Just it, it, I would have a board of five. I know one of them's going to be there. That's what I'm taking at 15. And in this, I, I am not as in love with Derek Stingley because the freshman tape was bar none better than anything else he ever did. I could say the same thing about damn near every corner that's come out of LSU in the last three years. It, it was good at a time. Then you had unstable coordinator issues at LSU, and then the injuries cropped up. To me, you have him on the opposite side of Darius Slay. He kind of reminds me of Marshawn Lattimore. That, that's what I ultimately think he will be. And if you're telling me that for a year I'm going to have Slay as my one, Stingley as my two, and I think at some point that's going to flip, yeah, now my secondary is pretty good, and I can use Zetch McPherson in the uh, slot. With the 18th. Or Avante Maddox. Whatever you yeah, want to do in this yeah. uh, With the 18th overall pick, this is the selection that they got from New Orleans in the trade, um, Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. You think this is the future signal caller centerpiece for this defense? I, I do. I absolutely love this kid. He, and I don't understand what the knock on him is. Well, he ran slow. Mom, I wish you could be Santa's little helper. And shut your damn cake off! I don't give a fuck. Watch him on film. He is one of the most physically impressive off-ball linebackers I have ever seen. Very good pass rusher. Very versatile. I think he fits nicely with what Philadelphia does. And this is the long-term play at linebacker. I know not every, every Eagle fan is in love with the thought of doing that. Look at your defense. This is exactly what you need in my opinion and this would be a a home run start starter on the outside at corner starter at linebacker and you've you've added draft capital for next year if the jalen hurts thing doesn't work out you'll be mobile in the draft and you can go get who you want all right it's that time 
If you're if you're in on a wide receiver, it's that time. Second round at number fifty one overall. May not be the one you want. George Pickens, the wide receiver out of Georgia. You'd be shocked. This kid's really, really popular in this cycle, and I'm not sure he's going to be there. On my board, he is because I ding him for the injury and the fact that he never really came back to full health. Then he's gone through the pre-draft process and absolutely crushed it. Mm-hmm. Fast, It ran faster than I thought he would. Big-bodied. When he's been healthy, he's been very good. The problem is it's been a very long time since I've seen him be fully healthy. He's a kid. If there were, if you told me a receiver in this draft was going to go higher than I thought he was, it's George Pickens. Christian Watson, I was on that well ahead of anybody else I heard. Uh, yeah, you got a six foot three receiver that's that good of a return guy that ran that fast. Yeah, he's going in the back half of the first round. Mm-hmm. I won't be shocked if George Pickens goes on day one. That that's the point we've gotten to. For me, he doesn't belong there. And this would. Of all the receivers I see in this draft, I don't want just another, and my mind has changed on this pretty aggressively, I don't just want another shifty little receiver. I want the big-bodied guy that in the red zone I can look at and go, that's my dude. Mm -hmm. That's George Pickens. That'll allow you to put Jalen Rager in the slot, which is where he's better off. And now you've got weapons. Now you've put Jalen Hurts in the best position to succeed. I really like George Pickens. I'm just afraid he's going to go higher than this, and that I won't love. In the third round, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles have two picks. The first one comes at 83rd overall. D'Angelo Malone, edge rusher, Western Kentucky. I know they have some interest in George Karloftis. The problem is their picks don't really fall in a place that he's going to go because 15 or 18 at this point is too high to take him. And he's not going to still be around at 51. There's just there's virtually no shot of that. I don't think anybody outside of D'Angelo Malone's immediate family has talked more about him than I have. Two-time Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Really disruptive off the edge. You just look at, to me, this is the compliment. You brought back Derek Barnett. You've, got, you've still got Brandon Graham. And, and I'm... Sure, some we don't necessarily need an edge. Well, there's not a whole lot of commitment to Derek Barnett or to Brandon Graham. And to me, this kid projects as a high-end disruptive pass rusher. I'm looking at who they're talking to going, okay, none of that's going to work. Unless you're going to make a move, which a move didn't work out here. I look at D'Angelo Malone in the third round as long, really lean, good bend. This I watched him do it with Josh Sweat. They took Josh Sweat right out from underneath my Jets, uh, who, by the way, I hadn't even mentioned up at this point. Philadelphia likes keeping a lot of edge, a lot of rushers and be interchangeable and be multiple, and he would allow you to do that. Uh, in their effort to move up in the first round, New Orleans also gave up their compensatory pick in the third round to the Eagles at 101 overall. Jesse Lucetta, linebacker from Penn State. I, I still maintain this kid says his own name wrong, but you know that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Lakita is one of those that I look at, and he's very tall for a linebacker, and he almost plays more like a safety, but he's a really good pass rusher. I think he is an early down kind of a hybrid guy, and I look at the mixture with Devin Lloyd. I think Philadelphia is completely bereft of talent at linebacker, and you know some people I'm sure disagree with that. Some people like Kazir White. Uh, I, I don't see it. Outside of TJ Edwards, I don't really see a ton of talent. Uh, and so to me, I can put Devin Lloyd on one side, I can put Lakita on the other side. I know one is going to be a hellhound. I become very multiple. I can do a lot of things. The only thing is, I'm not sure how well he's going to hold up in coverage. So you're going to have to take that into account. Now, that being said, T.J. Edwards was one of the best coverage linebackers in the NFL last year. So, the, to me, the those two fit nicely, and, and I would now I'd be looking at my defense, going, "Holy shit!" In, in a division that has two bad quarterbacks and one that's paid like he's way better than he is, I'm going to be able to kill quarterbacks. In the fourth round, pick one twenty four overall. Don't normally see Flostradamus go for, you know, kickers and such here, but here you go. You got a punter out of Arizona State, or excuse me, out of uh, San Diego State, sorry, uh, Matt Ariza. You also don't see many teams working out punters. That's, I mean, I've seen it happen before, but not much. This kid's just fucking different. Mm-hmm. 
He's the best punter I've ever seen. Now, is this too high for a punter? Yes, probably. But in terms of impactful player, he's going to be able to turn fields immediately. I think he walks into this league as one of the five best punters in the league. Huge leg. Unbelievably good at what he does. I can't remember the number of punts he dropped inside the 20, but it was it, it didn't it was like Madden shit. Like nobody does that. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I, they've already brought him in for a workout. Matt Arise is going to populate in a lot of these mock drafts because it seems like every team in the NFL wants their team to draft him. Yeah, it's, it's I've never seen this big of a clamoring for a punter. It's rare that you see media outlets go crazy over a punter's pro day, but there were at least seven articles written in major papers out on the West Coast about San Diego State's Matt Ariza. So, I, and I'm just I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm a big fan of the kid. Mm-hmm. Punter matters. Uh, as look, my team hasn't had one in 25 years. The last one we had was Tom fucking Tupa. So it matters. Philadelphia picks at 154 overall the first of three picks in the fifth round for them i'm tank spencer he's jeremy green and we are coming to you from the ingles studio ingles supermarkets low prices love the savings that first pick at 154 in the uh, fifth round they're going to take chiggy aconquo tied in out of maryland uh th- i had somebody make this comparison to me and now i can't unsee it he reminds me so much of Jonu Smith that it is absolutely insane. He is hyper athletic for a tight end. Now, in in the beginning, you're going to have to teach him some of the things. You're going to have to teach him how to be better as a blocker. He's not a bad blocker now. It's just a we'll say it's a work in progress. It was with Jonu Smith too. When he came into the league, he could not block he couldn't play dead in the Western as a blocker. Mm-hmm. Now he's one of the highest paid tight ends in the league, and there's a reason for that. Now, I, I do want him to be very multiple. This is the kind of offense that I want to see him in because he can be an immediate weapon because with the ball in his hands, he's just very tough to deal with. Uh, he caught a lot of tight end screens at Maryland, which is not something that I evaluate a lot of. That's kind of an old school way of uh, of playing, but I look at Philadelphia and go, well, with the line, I, that could be an element. This offense is not that bad. I like Chiggy Okonkwo a lot, rawer than you would want, but the high side is intoxicating. 162nd overall pick, Nick Cross, safety out of Maryland. Hey, you, you remember that thing I just said about Chiggy Okonkwo being rawer than you would like him to? Mm-hmm the same thing with nick cross uh and and i'll be honest with you there's almost no way i don't see nick cross ending up in pittsburgh well pittsburgh didn't have a pick that made this work so he would be phenomenal here hyper athletic six foot two fifteen ran a ridiculous number at the combine super fast at this point he is more athlete than he is any position I know that there are a couple teams that see him as a linebacker. I do not. I see him as a single high safety developmentally. You're going to have to kind of bring him along because he's not nearly as as developed as where I'm seeing him go. For right here, this is a great value. That, but that's how this is being drafted. It's off my board. So you know, I'm not taking Nick Cross in the third round because that doesn't make any fucking sense immediate immediate high-end contributor on special teams and i think if you're patient and put in the time he ultimately can uh be a deep safety he even played some will linebacker at maryland so i mean that was in college in a three three five. so you know take that with a grain of salt but a very versatile to me he's that isaiah simmons movable piece like i i, I may i may not even put a position on him I, i'll put it on the depth chart but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what he plays Philadelphia also has Arizona's pick in the fifth round of 166 overall. Jashawn, Jashawn Corbin, mm-hmm. running back out of Florida State. Uh, this is a player I know they've talked to. They really like him. He didn't really fit Mike Norvell's scheme at Florida State, and I can tell you this as a Florida State fan, but he is the thumper between the tackles that you're looking for. Perfect compliment to uh miles sanders i think he takes some of the pressure off miles sanders he miles is one of those players that i talk about i call this carry on johnson syndrome of i love the raw of you 
The problem is that we're not playing flag fucking football. And Miles Sanders is built like a basketball player. And so when you see these soft tissue injuries and different knee things and ankle things, that's why. Because you're not built like a running back. You're built like a slot receiver or a a wing in basketball. And so it just leads to a lot of bullshit like this. And one of the things that I have found myself doing more and more is adding these big bruiser backs. This is a, he's got a very, a faster version of LeGarrette Blunt. Since this is Philadelphia, I know you know who that is. And that's the, it's a very rough comp, but it's still a comp. I like Jay Sean Corbin a lot. And I think he would fit nicely in this system. Seventh round, last pick of the draft for the Philadelphia Eagles at 238 overall. An offensive tackle out of Florida, Jean Delance. I think every team in the NFL has talked to him at some point. I have seen him on every fucking meeting tracker that I have pulled since we've been doing this. The question is, where does he go? Because what I think teams are trying to do is set him up as a priority undrafted free agent. You're trying to position yourself because he will be Either a team's going to do what I have Philadelphia doing here where they just snake him late, or his phone will explode four seconds after the draft ends. But he's very raw. I mean, this is a kid that probably should not be on a field next year, which is weird to say for a redshirt senior that played as much as he did. It's just a whole different ball game in the NFL. Prototypical size, very, very good feet, very good lateral quickness. I think he could play a little swing tackle early. If you had to get him on the field, let's say there were injuries and you just went, fuck, I, we, we have to do something to keep him on the roster. You could do that initially. I don't want to see him do anything from a starting level early. He's got Malik Willis disorder. He's a year away from being a year away. But if you're patient, put in the time, get the body right. Because he was a, he had that weird, I don't even really know how to describe this. It seemed like he got smaller as the year went along. It didn't matter what he did because, and this is inside baseball kind of shit, but as the season goes along, you start eating more protein loading, carbo loading, things like that to keep your weight right. He couldn't seem to do that. And so he would, by the end of the year, he was, I mean, looking at him, it looked like he was about 285 pounds of which he started drastically bigger than that. So that's something to think, uh, I, a lot of teams seem to like him. So I had to find some way to get him in this mock, and I know Philadelphia's been hot and heavy on him. Now the Philadelphia Eagles' perfect mock draft. Obviously, you got to pay a lot of attention to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, your your offense is what it is. But starting out with Derek Stingley and Devin Lloyd and then the George Pickens pick, obviously, as a Georgia fan, I'm a big fan of that. I, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this because it doesn't apply to any team in the NFL more than the Philadelphia Eagles. Run the damn ball! <laughs> Look, I'm not a Jalen Hurts believer, and I'm probably never going to be, but this gives you the opportunity. Now everything's around him. The talent, this is an infusion of talent. I love this class for Philadelphia. Uh, If you love this class, if you hate this class, if you just want to tell me that I'm a big red-bearded man bun dipshit, feel free to do that in the comments. If you have questions, if you have a player you'd like to know how they fit with your Eagles, chuck that out there. Starting this Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the happy hour of our ESPN radio show, which you can catch live here at 3 Eastern Time every weekday. Our happy hour will be draft questions. We'll be doing about two minutes per team per show. We'll be doing that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday leading up to the 2022 April 28th NFL Draft live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, we will cover every pick live here in the Sportsocracy and, of course, hit that subscribe button so you can get all of our team-by-team content through the rest of Draftmas season. We're always coming to you from the Ingles studio. Ingles Supermarkets, low prices, love the savings. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. We'll see you next time.